Blue Reflection on the PS4. This isn't technically a research stream because let's be honest, I've, I've, I haven't played this game for four hours. I've been watching the story for four hours. Can I, let me explain something here. This is a game that was developed by Gus, the people who worked on Atlier, the Atlier games, you know, Atlier Totoro, Atlier Maruru, Atlier Aisha back in the PS3. They did this game. The game has a bunch of unskippable story sequences. I had this set to off when I first started the game. I set it to on so that the game automatically skips through the text. So you can just let the text run for as long as you want. I might include some of that, some of these storytelling sequences at the end of this video to give you some idea about how the pacing works. I wish I had known this earlier because I sat like an idiot, you know, pressing the X button over and over again. Fair warning, the unskippable storytelling sequences in this game last for half an hour. Then you might get into one fight. Then, when the fight ends, there's another, there's another half hour of unskippable storytelling sequences. And then, there, and then there, I just had a fight where I met two other characters, and they transformed into superheroines. Uh, these two ladies right here. Yuzu and Lime. They joined me. So now all three of us are kind of wandering around, you know, <laughs> doing our thing. In fact, is this the database? Yeah, fragment episodes. Okay, haven't gotten these yet. These are the enemies we've fought so far. Next. I'm not going to worry about that. Where's our help section, by the way? Battle Fundamentals. Yeah, this was the first... This is a turn-based strategy game, but in the first five hours, it's even less than that. It's basically... It, it, to me, it feels like one long QTE. I'm playing on the second highest difficulty level. What is it? Uh, yeah, bow difficulty. Yes, the normal difficulty level. You can set it harder if you want. I haven't needed to do that. I guess I could make it harder, but once I get into combat, you'll I'll show you why it's not even a problem. Event skip. Uh, I had this set to off the entire time, so I'm curious what happens if I set it to already red. I also, as you probably noticed there, I had to invert the controls here because for some reason, up, down, and left, right are inverted. So I had to invert them so they're more more like what I'm accustomed to playing with. Saints Row 4, Just Cause 2, like camera controls like this. So at least they give you the option. Maybe it's a Japanese standard, I don't know. But North American standards seem to be different. Western standards seem to be different than Japanese standards. And I don't know why. I guess maybe the people just got used to playing games with that kind of control set up with the cameras. So I don't know. Really. Uh, I'm not going to worry about growth. Like I said, all three of my party members here are superheroines now in this alternate world. Don't ask. <laughs> I'll probably talk more about that later. I'm just documenting how what's been going on so far in this game. So I had a half-hour cutscene, a fight, a half-hour cutscene, a fight just before this one, and now this. I finally get to explore a dungeon. But we're not exploring, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. Battle Exploration. By the way, the automation right there on the bottom right hand corner of the screen is turned to, set to on. Press R1 again, and I can turn off the auto skip. So I have to press the X button to advance the text. So if I set to R1, I wish I'd known this earlier, the game automatically skips to the next, to the next slide. So if you're like me and you're like recording the story, you can do that. I think it's only Japanese voice acting in this game. I don't, yeah, I don't remember if there was an option before I started the game to turn it off. So all the footage that I have is going to be commentary free except for this video. And you'll be able to hear the Japanese voice acting, which is okay. I mean, it's a lot less obnoxious than a lot of games I play on the PS3, so fair warning there. So this is a loop, right? It's technically supposed to be a loop, and I'll show you what happens once we make the complete loop. So watch what happens here. I don't think the game actually told us what we're supposed to do. So here's what I'm going to do. I haven't been, I'm not able to save my game at this point. See? Locked up. So hopefully I don't die. So watch what I do here. I'll show you the combat a bit later. For now, we're going to use the game's very minor stealth system. Yeah, to grab some loot. Okay, avoid that little floating creature over there. So we're gonna grab those. Okay, I think I avoided them. You can press the right stick to recenter the camera. 
frankly, the story that I read, and trust me, that's all I've been doing is reading and listening to it, it's not great. It's basically, this heroine, this character right here is the She-Ra form of a ballet dancer who busted her knee a while ago, and she can't perform anymore. But for some reason, when she's in this world and transforms into She-Ra, Hinako is her name, and for some reason when she transforms into She-Ra like this, she has the ability to jump, and she has an ice sword, because she has dichromatic eyes, and the sword is the same color as her, red, as her right eye. Let's see if I can zoom in on that and show you. So we're going to go through this um, door and show you what happens. Does this look familiar? Watch what happens when I go through the door. We're right back to where we started. Press it again. And that's where we ended the last dungeon run. So basically we're going in a big loop. So I guess the game wants us to collect these water things, right? Yep, I found it out the hard way. I was wandering around like an idiot for 10 minutes trying to figure out, like, wait, I'm, I'm going in a loop. Yes, you're going in a loop. You're supposed to go in a loop. So I'll grab that. Okay, he didn't see us, so we're bailing. There's another bobble over there. So we'll go for that in a second. You're starting to see how this works, right? As soon as I go through that door again, we're going to go right back to where we started. But I guess it's the game's way of telling us, yeah, we have to collect all the loot or fight all the enemies. I don't know. But, I, but once, I was able to comp once I was able to grab all the baubles, the stage ends. But let me at least show you one fight. See if I can sneak up on this guy. That's the ice sword that I was telling you about. Can I zoom in on her? Probably not yet. You can't really see her. I don't think you can see how she looks. Let me see if I can find out. Uh, glossary. Yeah, see? That's the, that's the Shira form of uh, Hinako. The main character you saw with the brown hair right here on the screen. Hinako. She's our main. Here in the alternate world, she becomes Shira. The reflector. The, di the dichromatic eyes, the blonde hair, and the ice-colored sword that matches her right eye. Again, her complexion doesn't change, but everything else about her does. We're not going to talk about that. So if I swing my sword like this, I can uh, get a quick, I can get a preemptive strike on the enemy. Which I think gives us an advantage in the, um, yeah, in the timeline. See the top of the screen right there? That's a Grandia-like timeline. So, like in Grandia, when your turn is up, you can hit an enemy with a regular attack, or you can use an attack that knocks them back on the timeline. It's called a knockback attack, and I'll show you what that is in a second. Gonna attack with her. She has a special attack that uses 30 of her MP. It's right there on the bottom of the screen. Her character's, her character's name is Lime, by the way. So we're gonna use 30 of her MP on the far bottom, on the bottom right hand, no, excuse me, this is Yozu, I'm sorry, it's Yozu on the left side of the screen. Don't ask me what that 40% reflect means. I have no idea, and it's not going to matter, trust me. Shooting. Now, who do we attack first? Well, Boredom Skull is going to go fourth. This one's going to go fifth. This one's going to go sixth. That's right there on the top of the screen, above these above these uh, items, icons. So we're going to attack the enemy that's going to come up next and knock him backwards. Give it a second to wind up. See a knockback. So we, knock, so we knock the character back on the timeline. Okay, so let's attack again. If you lion. We'll have her attack the next uh, enemy up coming up. So we'll knock him a little bit further backwards. See? So now four and five will go at the same time, pretty much. Okay, uh, attack. We're back to Yuzu again, apparently. Where's the lime? Oh well, not gonna complain. So we'll take out uh, this dude next. We'll knock him backwards. He resisted the knockback, so I find him using. <laughs> okay, that's never happened before. Deals hard damage. This is lime. Deals hard damage to one enemy. So it's a, a special small knockback. Which means we will not be able to knock the enemy back a little bit. Let's attack the fifth enemy. Instead of the fourth one. So we knocked him back. You see what's going on, right? We'll just keep knocking him backwards. Hinako is a bit more, so we'll knock the boredom skull backwards. Trust me, there's not a whole lot to this. <laughs> At least on the normal difficulty level. 
Okay, see if we can wipe him out with a shooting attack. Resist. I think he's dead. No, he's not dead. Alright, so let's see what we can do here. Hawk War. We can finish him off with a regular attack, it looks like. Let's do that instead. Get him with a bear. The enemy was weak to the teddy bear. <laughs> anyway, attack. So we're gonna knock back that dude. Yeah, let's knock him back. So we're gonna take out enemy three and knock him backwards. It's just a little bit of a knockback. Okay, so she's out of she's out of MP. She can't use the strike it. She can't use her shooting anymore. Let's attack the second enemy. He's gonna go next. If he's gonna get a hit on us, finally. Whoop! AoE attack, we lost our defense. We dropped a little bit of defense, but like I said, don't worry about it. We're just gonna play dumb, because the game's not exactly adding a lot of strategy at this point. Let's attack that dude first. Actually, let's, let's attack that dude first. Whittle him down. Okay, let's get uh, an attack in on this dude with the Hawk War. Actually, yeah, that uh, bear did a lot of damage to that last enemy. Let's, let's, give him the, let's have him talk to the palm. He's out. No, he's not dead. Okay, fine. Strike. Let's just wipe him out. We don't have to worry about him the next turn. Okay, we don't have to worry, we have one enemy left to worry about. Like I said, they're doing a grandiose system here. I mean, it's not bad. Not a lot of depth to it, though. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's just beat this dude up. Punch him in the face. Might just be easier just to tackle him without even worrying about, you know, knocking them back. Because Lord knows I didn't, I didn't have to fight any of these enemies the last time I played this game. Talk to the hand. Yep. You didn't like that. Yes, she has a bear. Is that bear in Dongon Ropa or something? Anyway, so we're done with the fighting. So you, saw, you got a chance to see a fight. Not a whole lot to that. In fact, I'm going to take on one more enemy just so you can see what happens. Okay, so, we got a, so we took the advantage against them. It should be easy enough. We got one enemy. Let's just punch him in the face. Let's see how quickly this ends. We good? Yeah. So the bear should wipe him out, right? No, it won't. It'll be close, but we won't wipe them out. We got all our, we got all our magic points back, in case you're wondering, at the end of that last fight. So we did knock him backwards, so that means we get an extra hit on him before he can attack us. Yep. So that was a decent strategy that time. We kept him from attacking. Getting grudge, huh? So you got to see how the combat works. <laughs> Not a lot to it, at least at this point in the game. It's only the set, it's only the, remember this is the first dungeon we've gotten a chance to explore. Now that we've collected the last item, the stage ends. So we'll let this one play out. I think this, I think this, I don't think there was a boss battle. I think this, I think the story just ends like 20 minutes later. Then I, I then I wind up back in the real world again. So we'll just let this play out. As I complained, there was a lot going on in the first half hour of this game that has absolutely nothing to do with gameplay whatsoever. It is just one long, unskippable cut sequence. And I can't skip any of this, can I? Nope, can't skip none of it. I can hold down the score circle button and it does nothing. I can hold down the X button and it does nothing. I guess I can just mash on this button. I mean, I don't know if you can hear me, I'm just mashing on this button. But that's the problem. I mean, all I can do is just mash on the button and wait for the next, you know, item of text to show up. Okay, here comes the next enemy, right? Okay, here we go, here we go. So trust me, the most most fights last much longer. Most cutscenes last much longer than this. So I'll probably finish up the video with a regular one. Okay, let's just wipe out some enemies that are in our way. Can I knock them backwards? Let's see if we can knock him back a little bit, so we'll get two hits on him. 